I met Jerry in June of 1979. I was general counsel. Russ Granick was the assistant general counsel. And we quite simply were charged with the oversight of his purchase of the Lakers, as well as the form from Jack Ken Cook. It was an immensely complex transaction, particularly in the then rudimentary world of sports team purchases. And the owners committee, fully briefed by us, had many, many questions for Jerry, which he patiently answered and those owners accepted. Then they asked him to leave the room and wait in the ante room. And they told us why this or that part of the transaction was incomprehensible and didn't pass muster. And Russ and I would dutifully shuffle to and fro, explaining to Jerry why the transaction was not up to snuff. And he patiently explained to us why it was. And then he went in and visited the owners again and again and again to give further details that would ultimately get the sale approved. It was an uncomfortable time for Russ and me. We thought that the waiting and inquisition bordered on impoliteness. But I was struck then by Jerry, Jerry's most gracious demeanor, his patient responses, and his instant understanding with a wink of an eye that he understood that we were just doing our job as gently as possible. And thus began Jerry Buss's Hall of Fame NBA career and our 34-year friendship. You will hear many speak of Jerry's business acumen and the quality of the experts with whom he uh, worked and surrounded himself. You'll hear about the family culture for players and colleagues, about showtime, and about much more. I would just like to say, it's not an exaggeration, to say that Jerry was nothing less than a transformational force in the history of sports, creating the value proposition through pricing, naming rights, cable TV networks, TV rights, and entertainment all of which underlie all arena and stadium construction in the United States and around the world. It's been for the last three decades, and it will continue into the future. And of course, that meant the ability to pay for the talent that brought people into those venues. Despite the unparalleled success of the Lakers, and the sometimes less than warm reception that some of Jerry's early decisions receive from his fellow owners, such as the entire repricing of the forum to unheard of levels and paying some young kid named Johnson a million dollars a year. Jerry was devoted to the growth of our league and our sport and always voted for what was best for all even though it would take away an advantage for the Lakers or cost them financially. The salary cap of 1983, the increasingly substantial tax on salary and subsequent collective bargaining agreements, the revenue sharing accord of 2011, Jerry was a league guy. As chairman of the board, member of our advisory finance committee, our audit committee, a seemingly perpetual member of our Labor Relations Committee or a member of our Long-Term Planning Committee, he earned the respect, trust, and friendship of other owners, many of whom are in attendance today. And he was most generous in sharing his time and thoughts with all of his fellow owners. I've heard the word flamboyant used, but I experienced Jerry as actually modest and inquisitive. He used to use the forum as a kind of salon, where he would tell us that he invited authors who works he admired so he could ask them questions that he sought answers to. He was trading tickets for knowledge. We loved it, and he thought it was great. We would have some unique conversations about whether he should make a naming rights deal for the t-shirt he wore while playing 
poker in Las Vegas. I think he was poking me, but he pushed at me on the subject on more than one occasion. The only argument we had was whether he should be permitted to rotate off the audit committee. I said no, he said yes. He said that other owners were more sophisticated people and that I should allow him to be replaced. Yes, Jerry, I, I fell off a turnip truck. Uh, but he said he ran a simple family business. And I laughed with him when he said that. But indeed, he did consider it a family business in which all of his children would be schooled and included. And he won the argument so he could spend more time schooling and including them. He lived life, did Jerry Buss, with an uncommon intensity in his, competitiveness, oops, his, in his competitiveness and his drive for business success, in his concern for his family, in his compassion for his community, and in his loyalty to his fans and his friends. Oh, as the immediacy of the loss for his family recedes, may his memory be a blessing to them and bring a smile to all of our faces and a rejoicing for his time among us. Rest in peace, my friend.